Imagine a bustling underwater cleaning station where cleaner fish dart around their larger aquatic clients. These cleaner fish have a unique job. They eat the parasites and dead skin off their clients. In return, the larger fish provide a steady food source and protection for the cleaner fish. This exchange of services is a classic example of a mutualistic relationship where both parties benefit. But there's more to this story. The larger fish have a choice. They can choose which cleaning station to visit, creating a competitive market for the cleaner fish. This is biological market theory in action, where supply and demand, competition and partner choice play out in the depths of the ocean. Now, let's shift our gaze from the underwater world to a vibrant garden buzzing with bees. These industrious insects aren't just collecting nectar for honey. They're also playing a vital role in pollination as they transfer pollen from one flower to another. In this biological market, the flowers are the clients, offering nectar as payment while the bees act as service providers. Yet it's not a simple transaction. Flowers compete for the bees' attention with brighter colours, sweeter nectar and more enticing scents. The bees, in turn, have the freedom to choose which flowers to visit, further driving the competitive nature of this biological market. Our exploration continues with the curious partnership between ants and aphids. Ants protect aphids from predators, and in return, they milk the aphids for a sweet substance called honeydew. This protection for food mutualism is another example of how biological markets operate, with each party providing a valuable commodity for the other. And just like in human markets, competition exists here too. Different ant colonies compete for the best aphid herds, and aphids have the ability to choose their ant protectors. In these stories of cleaner fish, bees and ants, we see the principles of the biological market theory come to life. But what have we learned? First, nature is full of mutualistic relationships where organisms exchange commodities for mutual benefit. Second, these biological markets are governed by the same principles as human economic markets. Supply and demand, competition and partner choice. Finally, organisms like bees play an invaluable role as service providers, contributing significantly to the health of our ecosystems. So, the next time you see a bee buzzing from flower to flower or watch a nature documentary about cleaner fish, remember that these interactions are more than just fascinating spectacles. They are examples of the biological market theory at work, showcasing how the natural world has its own version of economics. And just like in our human markets, these biological exchanges are vital for maintaining balance and promoting survival.